All these shots you see here were not taken with an action camera, neither with a GoPro, nor with any other camera. They were created with the help of AI. And no matter what you think about the topic of AI, AI will have a lasting impact on photography and soon videography. That's why it's important that today we take a look at what AI can already do in action photography and what doesn't work so well yet. Most of the shots you can see here were taken with Midjourney. Midjourney generates images based on text input. This image, for example, was created based on the following text. Photo of biker, downhill, dolomites in the background, cinematic lighting, sunset, GoPro. Of course, Midjourney is not the only AI-based image generator. Also well known are for example Dolly from OpenAI or Stable Diffusion. However, I have the impression that at the moment Midjourney produces by far the best results. At least when entering simple descriptions of the desired image. Especially Stable Diffusion is supposed to achieve good results with a very detailed text input. With the just mentioned terms, however, the result is not very good, as you can see here. Dolly produces slightly better images in this example in my opinion, although the whole comparison is not quite fair, since I mainly used Midjourney and the entire text was adapted to the way Midjourney works. But is it really that easy to create good images using AI? Yes is the answer. I'll now show you what you need to do to create your first cool action shots using Midjourney. Then you can still decide if you want to try it yourself or not. Unfortunately, Midjourney has a disadvantage compared to Dolly and Stable Diffusion. It is not really available for free. If you want to test Midjourney seriously, you should definitely sign up for a subscription. The cheapest plan costs $10 per month and can be cancelled at any time. In my opinion, the basic plan is sufficient for a start. Therefore, a first test will cost you $10 in the beginning. Midjourney then chose a very unusual solution for its user interface. You use Midjourney via the communication app Discord and assign jobs to Midjourney as if you were communicating with another user. The other user in this case is the Midjourney bot. You therefore also need a Discord account, which is of course completely free of charge. Once you have registered on Discord and Midjourney and made a basic subscription, you are ready to go. You open Discord and choose the Midjourney server. So here on the left, the white icon with the boat. Now you'll see a whole bunch of channels down here on the left. Basically, these are chat rooms. There are support channels, announcement channels, and of course channels that are primarily meant to generate images. Those would be the newcomer rooms and the general image gen rooms. And that's what we want to do. So you just select one of those rooms and now you can join the conversation. The whole approach is cumbersome but it has one distinct advantage. You can see the images of the other users and with which descriptions or commands they were created. You can therefore learn from the results of other users and understand which descriptions and commands work well and which do not. If you particularly like an image, you can also download it. According to the terms and conditions of Midjourney, all images created with the free account are free for everyone to use, while the rights of the other images belong to the user. However, the copyright is actually not based on a private agreement, but is regulated by law. And just a few weeks ago, the US Copyright Office declared that AI-generated images from text are not subject to copyright protection. If it stays that way, we have to assume that at least in the US, all images generated by text input and AI could be freely usable for everyone. But be careful, this is not meant to be legal advice. To create an image, use the Imagine command. For this you enter slash imagine. The Midjourney bot will appear and you tap on the prompt. You can now communicate directly with the Midjourney bot and describe what should be depicted on your image. You can do that as you like. A single term or emoji is enough. For example, biker. The less you describe, the freer the AI is in creating the image. In general, you could stick to the following structure. First, the subject. So what should be depicted? For example, a mountain biker. Then if it makes sense an activity, so for example riding downhill, then you can describe the background, in my case dolomites, and possibly the mood, exposure or style of the image. Midjourney tends to produce more artistic images and less photorealistic results. If you want your result to look more like a photo, enter photo of before the description. So instead of just mountain biker, photo of mountain biker. At the end of the description, you can add parameters. You use the parameters to further influence the generation of the image. You use parameters by adding two hyphens at the end of the description and then the parameter. With the parameter v5, you determine that for example the newest version, thus the version 5 of Midjourney, is to be used. The default is still version 4. With the parameter AR, you define the aspect ratio, for example AR 16 to 9, for an image with an aspect ratio of 16 to 9. Don't worry, the system of parameters 
is not as complex as it seems at the moment. There are a manageable number of parameters. When you are satisfied with your description, you submit the input. Midjourney will now generate four results, which will be displayed in a small grid. You now have two main options. With U1 to U4, you can create a high resolution version of the best image. With V1 to V4, you can create four most likely modified versions of the best image. If you like a picture, you can download it. Now you know everything you need to get started. The results are really amazing, but even Midjourney currently has some crucial weaknesses that you should know about. Quite often, there are problems with the geometry of objects. The bicycle does not always look like a bicycle. Or the skier does not wear the skis on his feet. Or the ski balls will through the air. Also, it is currently almost impossible to represent yourself in an AI-generated image. For example, you might want to generate an image of yourself standing on a mountain in the sunset. While you can upload images of yourself and then add descriptions, the result isn't such that anyone would actually believe you yourself were standing on that mountain. So for now, you can barely create fake memories. Pictures of famous people, on the other hand, work because the AI obviously knows their appearance well. I made this video today because I find the development extremely fascinating, because it will certainly revolutionize the whole photography sector. Who will still buy stock photos in the future when the AI achieves such good results? It will hardly be possible to build up an Instagram account only with beautiful pictures, but that was hardly possible in the last years anyway. Cameras will continue to play an important role, because ultimately we want to capture our own memories. But what is your opinion on this topic? Will you give Midjourney a try? If you want me to do a really in-depth Midjourney tutorial, write me in the comments. And give me a like as feedback if the video was interesting to you. There will be more videos about AI, so stay tuned and see you next time.